Hey everybody, Dr. O here. This video I want to go over the capsule. So I, I mentioned it in an introductory video earlier, but uh, the capsule is very important, so it's worth noting a few examples and also its relationship to something very important, the biofilm. So uh, the capsule is an example of a glycocalyx, which basically means sticky sugar coat. So microorganisms, are, uh, microorganisms are, are able to produce these substances inside of them, these gelatinous, like sticky polymer substances that are usually a combination of carbs or, or proteins, or it can be both, but they're wildly different amongst organisms, but they, they, they have this material that they can spew out onto themselves and coat themselves with. So if it's real loosely uh, laying on there and unorganized, it's called a slime layer, but we generally care about the neatly organized uh, capsules. So a capsule is an example of a glycocalyx. The uh, reason that's important is I think of the capsule as kind of a biofilm for a single organism because biofilms are wildly important. According to the CDC, at least 70% of the infections that humans deal with are from biofilm forming organisms. So so we'll do a separate video about biofilms, but biofilms are really the same thing, This, but this substance that gets spewed out, but it covers groups of organisms instead of a single one. So think of a capsule as a, a biofilm for one. So why are they so important? Why is it so important that the, to this organism that has this, it's green in this picture, but it has this capsule, this neatly organized sugary or sticky coat ar around its surface? Well, it increases virulence, and, the, and it's believed that the main reason, or really the only reason this is the case, is that it helps these organisms evade phagocytosis. So think about how many of your immune cells function by phagocytosis. You've got um, any of your, you know, your macrophages and, and, and um neutrophils, you know, you name it. We have macrophages, microphages. So these are all eaters, right? They engulf and destroy things like bacteria. Well, the capsule appears to make that either impossible or um, way less likely. So I'll give you a couple examples here. Um, Bacillus anthracis, the causative agent of anthrax. If it has a capsule, it can cause anthrax. If it doesn't have a capsule, it doesn't. And they believe that's because uh, the capsule helps it evade phagocytosis. Um, Streptococcus pneumonia, it is known that it from Frederick Griffith's experiments, which we covered in a separate video, um, if a Streptococcus pneumonia bacteria doesn't have a capsule, it cannot cause pneumonia. It cannot. It, it is not a pathogen. If it has a capsule, it can cause pneumonia, um, sepsis, meningitis. It still kills 1.4 to 1.5 million humans a year. So the capsule is what makes Streptococcus pneumonia dangerous. Same thing with Klebsiella pneumonia, another very potent pathogen. If it has a capsule, but if it doesn't have one, it's not. So the capsule. So just think this, this coating on the surface of an organism that makes it virulent or more virulent, which means more dangerous, more pathogenic, because it helps these organisms evade phagocytosis. And then also just keep in the back of your mind for later that a capsule is pretty much a biofilm for one. So the same, the same sticky coating that goes on one cell can cover communities of organisms as well, and we'll, and we'll cover that a lot later. All right, I really hope that helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.